Now it's time to look at solving quadratics by completing the square. Remember, to solve quadratics, what we're trying to do is still trying to find the zeros or the roots of the quadratic equation. We're setting this equal to zero. We're trying to find out where they cross the x-axis. I like this. <laughs> All right, let's write down a vertex form. It's another way of writing a quadratic equation. It's actually like this. It goes a times x minus h, all that squared, all that plus k. This is sort of how it's written. It's something with some little quantity in here squared. So that right there, it's called vertex form for a reason. It tells you the vertex. Turns out the vertex is at um, h comma k. That's why we call it a vertex form. Notice, though, it's a minus h. So if this is like x minus 2, then the vertex is at just 2. Watch out. That means if it's x plus 2 here, you have to think of h is x a negative. We'll see that later, but just so you know, this is important. Uh, what's nice about this form, though, also, I mean, not only is it good for vertex, but it's also good for solving the zero, for finding the zeros. It turns out this you can algebraically manipulate to get what x is. You can actually do that. So how do we get it into this form? We're going to do something called completing the square. This is actually pretty complicated. A lot of students hate this method. I know I hated it with a passion when I was in high school. Now I see the use of it, but yeah, it's a bit annoying. So let's get into it. First of all, we have to understand perfect squares. What are those? I'll show you this. So a perfect square would be something like, um, let's say it goes a plus b, all that right here squared. That's a perfect square, we say. Well, let's say we wrote it out. It's just a squared plus b squared, right? No, every time you do that, your teacher cries. No, it's the same thing as saying a plus b times a plus b, right? That's the same. And if you remember how to expand binomials like this, um, we used a trick in high school I used, it's called FOIL. So first, outside, inside, last. So we multiply the first times the first, which is a times a, which is a squared, times the outside, which is a times b, so it's plus a b. Uh, plus the inside, the inside too, so b times a, which is the same thing, it's a times b, plus the last, that's l, so b times b, which is b squared. Notice then that gives me a squared plus, now we have two different terms with a, b, so that gives me 2ab, all that plus b squared. That's by the way why I put this awesome meme here, create a math meme. When, you, when your mother calls you by your full name, look, an a plus b squared is like, oh crap, because she's calling them a squared plus 2ab. Ah, oh, look, it's a perfect square. Well, we have another one, by the way, a similar way. We have a minus b squared. It's another perfect square. Well, it's going to be a minus b times a minus b, which will equal, it turns out it's a squared, um, yeah, minus ab, right? minus ab again. And minus times minus gives you a plus, so it's still this, which is a squared, whoops, minus 2ab plus b squared. Now, why do I care? Well, it's because I'm going to use this idea. I'm going to do them with x's instead, though, so I'm going to leave it more generic. I'm going to say, like, x plus a. Let's just look at that squared. Well, that's going to be, we'll just use the result here. It's going to be x squared, the first thing right here. I'm just calling the a's and b's differently. So I'm just going to be, it's going to be x squared plus 2 times a times x. So it's going to be 2ax plus the last term squared, which is in this case going to be a squared. I'm just writing it in this form right here, except instead of putting a's and b's, I'm saying x's and a's. So this is one of our perfect squares. The other one is going to be very similar. It's just going to be the same idea. So x squared, except you notice it has a minus there. So it'll be minus 2ax and still plus a squared. Now, why do I care? Well, the goal with completing the square is going to be to write out something in such a way that I can write it like this as a perfect square. This is going to be the key. The key is going to be get from here to here. That's what we're going to try to do here. And there's a method to do it. Okay, do notice very carefully. We write it as some sort of x's. We have some sort of thing called an a. We want to get it in terms of, you notice, we've got this a thing squared, and then we have to have two times that same a in the middle here. As long as we have that, we can then just write it like this. The goal is going to be to get to that kind of form, or like this. So let's see if we can do it. So do you notice, though, this little a? If we want to try to find out what a is, we're going to artificially force it to be like this. See, we're going to do this when something doesn't factorize easily. Because if it factorized easily, I would just factorize it to find the zeros. But if it doesn't factorize easily, then you can complete the square. 
And the goal will be to use this idea, okay? This is going to be the key part to it right here. This is it. This is actually the key to it. So what do I mean by all this? I mean that we're going to take something with x's, and we're going to divide that number by 2, because that'll help us to get a. See, if we already knew that this number in front of it was 2a, well, if I divided that thing by 2, I'll get just a. And I have to add that thing squared. So the goal will be to find an a and to square it. And then we can rewrite it like this. Now, this is going to seem complicated at first, okay? We use this when something isn't easy to factorize. I'm going to give you an algorithm to solve, and don't worry, I'm going to show you two different examples where we actually do it, okay? I'm going to show you two different examples, I'll walk you through it. Step one, we're going to get x on one side. So let's actually use, side by side, let's actually do this example right here. So if I want to complete the square here, I'm going to do this first step here. I want to get all my x's on one side, so I'll say x squared minus 4x. Now, yes, I'm trying to find the zeros, but I'm going to dump my minus 1 to the other side. It's actually going to be simpler. I want the x squared term to have a coefficient of 1. Right now it does, which is great. If it didn't, I need to do that. So I need to take out something. Maybe I take out a number, a common factor. So actually, I'm still there. Do you notice this one here? Check. I got it. All right, for the coefficient of x, remember what I said before here. We're going to try to artificially force a perfect square. We're going to try to get it to where that number, we're going to divide it by 2 to find out what a is. And then we're going to add that thing squared. And that'll be my magic. So that's why I say for your coefficient of x, you divide it by 2, that's a. Then we add a squared to both sides. Or we can add and subtract on one side. I'll explain that in a second. Let's do this. This is the harder part. So I'm going to take this minus 4 now. Okay, I'll maybe do it on another color. I take that minus 4, that's my coefficient in front of the x. And I'm going to Divide it by 2, and that gives me, let's see, minus 4 over 2 is minus 2. It turns out that is A. This is going to be important. I'm going to put a circle around it. That's what I'm going to need. Then what do I do? I add that thing squared to both sides. So what's A squared? Well, that's going to be minus 2 times minus 2, which is just 4. So notice then what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to this thing right here, this x squared, minus 4x, the whole goal was to add that plus 4. That's what I was going to try to do, is add that plus 4 here. That's what I'm doing, because now I've made this, this thing artificially a perfect square on one side. But you can't just do something to one side without doing to the other side. So that's why I'm going to still leave it with my 1, except I'm going to, because I had a 1 over here, I'm going to add my 4 over here. Do you notice? You can't just arbitrarily add to one side. You must add it to both sides. In case there's no equal sign going on, then you have to add and subtract on one side. What do I mean by that? Because you're not allowed to do something that's not allowed. So what if, the, what if there weren't any of these? Then I would say minus 4 here. And you'd say, well, why would I do that? That cancels out and gives me a 0. But no, no, no. I'm going to make this a perfect square. That's going to be the key part. So if you have an equal sign, though, just do it like I've done. You'll be fine. So just like this, you just have to follow proper math rules. So I can now write this as a perfect square. The whole reason we did this was to go back here and say, ah, look, if I've got something with a plus 2ax, then I've got a x plus a. If I've got something with a minus in the middle, then it's x minus a. Let's see if we can do this. Turns out this is a perfect square. So I can rewrite it as a perfect square. Then I'm not going to say it's x minus, now what was a? It was 2. Well, it was minus 2 technically. but So it's going to be like this, uh, squared. And that's going to be equal to 1 plus 4, which is 5. So I've just got this. Now, why is this helpful? This is, by the way, now, I mean, I could rewrite it in vertex form. Technically, vertex form would be uh, x minus 2, all that squared, minus 5 if I moved it over. But I don't really care about the vertex. I want to solve for the zeros, so I can actually solve for x now. So this, by the way, this is in... This is what I needed. So now I've completed this square. I'm done. I've, I've made this thing into a perfect square. See? There it is. So because of this, then what do I do? Well, I can then take this and say, well, I'm going to um, try to solve for x. And to solve for x, let's see. I need to take the square root of both sides, so I'll do this. Keep in mind, it's going to be plus or minus square root of 5, because right? you can have a negative or a positive can be squared to give you this. Um, then I move my 2 over, so I say x equals 2 plus or minus square root of 5. So this is the compact way to write it. You could then rewrite it as, you know, it's 2 plus square root of 5. And you could say it's 2 minus square root of 5. They're both correct, right? So this, I fully solve for this. These are the solutions. 
I could do this with a calculator and and uh, be sure, but I this is right. This is going to work. You can always check with the calculator if you're allowed, but if it's on paper one, then you want to do it like this. All right, let's do another example. So we have f of x equals x squared plus 6x minus 7. We first want to write it in this form, in vertex form. Remember, that's what this is here. This is vertex form. Well, I'm going to do this same idea here, except this time I'm going to keep everything on the right. So this is why I'm going, to, I'm going to keep it all on the right here. So I'm going to attempt to do that at least. So first of all, I'm going to, I can't really put all the x's onto one side, so I'll just leave them. But what I'm going to do is focus on the terms right here. I've got my x squared plus 6x. I'm going to focus on that one. I'm going to ignore for the moment, I'm going to leave a big space here and say minus 7 because I don't really care about that one. And I'm just going to work on this one. I'm going to try to complete the square on this thing. That's because this doesn't factorize, at least not easily. So I'm going to take this. Remember what I said to do here? We take this, we divide it by 2, which gives me 3, and that's a. Now, a squared is going to be equal to 3 times 3, which is 9. So I've got to add 9. That's going to be the key here. I've got to add my 9, but I don't have an equals. So that means I have to also subtract a 9 as well. Now, the only thing I really care about, though, is this first part. I actually only care about this one. That's the important one. So I'm going to do that one and write it as, that's the same thing as x plus 3 squared. This is a perfect square. Right? It's going to be x plus a. So that's the reason I did it, because now I wrote it as x plus 3 quantity squared. Keep in mind, I have minus 9 minus 7. Okay, so that's still important. So that's uh, minus um, 16. And that's what I have. So that's f of x equals this. So now I've got this in a vertex form. Okay, so that's this vertex form. There we go. That's part A, by the way, I've solved. That was part A. Okay, there we go. So let's do part B now. Now as I check, it's going to be a lot easier. We've actually done all the hard work. Let's do the vertex. Well, the vertex is always just h comma k, if you have it in that right form. Remember this vertex form here, h k, except you have to be very careful. It's supposed to be written as a minus, so the vertex will be the opposite sign in here. In other words, here the vertex will be, whoops, I went too far. The vertex here will be minus 3, comma, uh, minus 16. That'll be my vertex. Okay, it'll be minus 3, minus 16. If I want the roots, remember, those are the zeros. That's what those are called. So maybe I'll just uh, put a line like this here. So what are the roots? Those are called the zeros. All right. Well, zeros are when I make f of x equals 0. So I'm going to say 0 equals x plus 3 squared minus 16. Well, I can move my minus 16 to the other side. I have 16 equals x plus 3 squared. Now I can take the square root of both sides, so I get uh, square root of 16, by the way, is 4. So I'm going to have plus or minus 4 equals x plus 3. If I want to get x by itself, I have to move my, make this a minus 3, right? So I'm going to have x equals minus 3 plus or minus 4. So that means I have x equals minus 3 plus 4, and I have x equals minus 3 minus 4. Well, minus 3 plus 4 is just 1. Minus 3 minus 4 is minus 7. So I can say, therefore, my x equals 1, x equals minus 7. Done. So to see how we could complete the square, so although this is a little bit complicated seeming, and it, it does take practice, okay? So hang in there if you think this is really strange. I agree with you, it is strange. Okay? But completing the square can be useful, right? because you can actually find the different solutions here. So we found the different roots. So again, what do you do? You have to make it into a perfect square. You're trying to use this idea here.